Hello and welcome to the Scatterful channel and today I want to give you guys a quick overview of the best budget processors available in the year 2020. So in this video I'm going to give you guys four solid recommendations for CPUs you should get that are under $200 all with their own individual pros and cons because as we all know not all processors are made the same so don't worry I'm going to be covering which one may be the best for say future proofing your PC so if you want to throw in a much faster graphics card than what you have right now and you don't want to bottleneck it i got you covered or if you want to find one that's great for both content creation and gaming at the same time i got you on that as well so this whole video is going to be covering just four that i think are really great for the year 2020 and i think this will for the most part stay updated for the longest time until ryzen 4th gen is officially announced which may not happen actually till next year but i can't confirm on that and if you're watching this video and you're like but wait what's the best budget processor that's over 200 dollars, or which one has value for that i just stick it to third gen ryzen don't look at intel and i wouldn't spend any more money than a 3700x because at that point you're just throwing money into a furnace <laughs> i mean this is coming from a 3700x owner you don't need anything more overkill than this. Anyways, if you enjoyed budget and value guides when it comes to hardware and PC gaming, then do consider subscribing to the Scatterville channel. And if you wanna make sure that you get my latest uploads, don't, well actually you can turn on YouTube notifications, but follow me on Instagram and Twitter because you will always receive notifications for when I upload. And if you wanna talk about this topic with other cool community members when it comes to tech and all that cool stuff, then do consider taking a visit at the Scatterville Discord server where there's a lot of fun to be had, which all of that can be found in the description. But now a quick word from our sponsor. So say you're considering buying one of these budget processors for a gaming PC and you build it, it's all good to go. You install Windows, but you don't actually have a Windows key yet to activate that PC. Well, don't worry because you can check out vipsedkey.com to purchase a really inexpensive copy of Windows 10 Home Pro or whatever version you want. Within a matter of minutes, you can get a licensed Windows 10 key from their website. And on top of using my code from the description, you can get an extra discount on your order. So you can get yourself a brand spanking new, like $10 Windows 10 key to finally activate that PC. So you can get rid of that annoying watermark and limited features from your free version of Windows 10. So if you wanna check out vipscdkey.com, I'll have, I'll have a link for them at the top of the description. So first, honorable mentions. I wanna give a shout out to the Ryzen 3500X for being a China only processor found in OEM systems over there, which for the most part, you could have bought an exclusive three through AliExpress for about $150, but they shut that down so you can't anymore. I do have one here though, so I got lucky on that. And also I wanna give any other shout out to the Ryzen 2600, because as you'll see, it's not on this list, all thanks to the first processor for this video. So first, I wanna talk about the Ryzen 1600 AF. This is an $85 processor you can find right now on Amazon that is pretty much the same as the Ryzen 2600. So it's a six core, 12 threaded processor that is overclockable, but the AF on the 1600 indicates that it's on the 12 nanometer wafer, not the 14 nanometer wafer found from the first gen of Ryzen processors. This is running on the same one as the 2600, so the 2000 series of Ryzen processors. And what that means is that you're getting a Ryzen 2600 for less. It's a tremendous processor for gaming and even for a little bit of content creation thanks to those extra cores and threads. So I'd go ahead and get the 1600 AF if you want a great overall performing chip for under $100 that can cover all the bases regarding gaming, VR, streaming, and content creation. But again, it is kind of like a very baseline processor, so it's not the best, but it's definitely gonna put you in a much better position than getting like a four core i3 or four core Ryzen APU for about $100 for the same price. Second, I wanna talk about the Ryzen 3600. So this is the only third gen processor on this list because it is the only one you can find for under $200 and it proposes some awesome value. So just like the 1600 AF, it's got six cores, 12 threads, it's overclockable, but it's on the third gen architecture, which means it's on a seven nanometer wafer, which means it's even faster because it's a lot smaller and more dense. 
So again, this is the only third gen Ryzen processor you can find that's under $200. And usually when it comes to kind of judging the value of a processor, they usually diminish after $150. But I truly think this chip for $180 seriously still holds its value even if it's a little bit more expensive than the other three processors on this list and like i said it's probably the one to get if you want to get a faster graphics card in the future like say if you have a 1660 right now but you want to get like the next big navi chip or next rtx 3000 series of graphics card this processor right here probably has the best chance of having the least amount of bottlenecking out of this whole list so get that if you want to have that anticipation for a better graphics card or again if you want just a really awesome all-in-one chip that's going to deliver great gaming performance streaming content creation all that sort of stuff but for under 200 dollars and is on that elite 7 nanometer wafer with third gen ryzen and third on this list, and mostly for those of you looking at content creation and streaming, I have the Ryzen 2700, which you can get for $150. Now, this is an 8-core chip with 16 threads, and it's on the second generation of Ryzen architecture, so it's on that 12 nanometer wafer. But it's $150, and out of this whole list, it offers the most cores and most threads for the money, disregarding the 1600 AF. So the reason why I like this over its older 2700X brother is that the 2700 is clocked at a lower clock speed and is not as intensive in terms of TDP, so you can pair up this chip with a basic B450 motherboard without overclocking it, and you won't blow up the board because with the 2700X, it does have a higher TDP, and it could get really hot on one of those basic budget motherboards because for the most part, the 2700X is designed for X470 motherboards, which those are a lot more expensive than mid-range B450 motherboards. So for that reason alone, I really like the 2700 because your overall system configuration will be less expensive than going with the 2700X and having to pair it up with a more expensive motherboard. But again, those extra cores and threads are gonna be super useful when it comes to using Adobe Premiere Pro or OBS if you're gonna be streaming and even any sort of like VR or whatever, like whatever that could use more than six cores, this chip will deliver certainly. So I would get the Ryzen 2700 if you are actually going to be taking content creation and streaming seriously. So like if you're actually going to be editing 4K files on Adobe Premiere and if you're going to be streaming with a bunch of like scenes, cameras, effects, animations, and you're actually going to be taking it seriously because for the most part, for only about $30 more, you can get the Ryzen 3600, which is more expensive than the 2700 but those six cores and 12 threads are still gonna be fairly decent for basic editing and streaming. So if you're actually gonna be taking content creation seriously, I would get the 2700 and then I'll save you $30 versus the 3600. And finally on this list, and for those of you who may be looking at building a starter gaming PC, I would consider getting the Ryzen 3200G. This is a $95 APU, and APU stands for CPU and GPU and one chip, because this chip is great for those of you who are building a super cheap gaming PC, like a $300 or $250 PC, and you don't have money right off the bat to get a dedicated graphics card. So what this chip can allow you to do is that starting off, you can use its integrated Vega 8 graphics and even overclock them to get some fairly decent 1080p gaming performance out of the box. And then of course use that CPU portion, which is four cores and four threads to support a future dedicated graphics cards, which then can take over those Vega 8 graphics that you started out with. So it's a really inexpensive option that's on the 12 nanometer wafer. So don't get that twisted. It's not on the seven nanometer wafer that's on the higher end 3000 series of Ryzen processors. It's still on the 12 nanometer, but that's still quite the improvement over the last generation of 2000 series APU processors. So while this chip may sound like it's a really big deal, remember that it's still a four core, four threaded processor. So it's not gonna be that great when it comes to content creation. I mean, yes, you can edit on it, but your render times are gonna be really long. And of course, streaming on it is gonna be extremely limited considering that you're using the integrated onboard graphics and the CPU to stream entirely from one chip. So it's gonna be a huge load. And from what I've experienced, can only stream super easy to run games like Minecraft, Roblox, and League of Legends. 
but nothing beyond that. Not even Fortnite, don't try it. So I get the 3200G if the budget of your next PC is going to be $350 or under, and you don't wanna get an old used processor so that you can squeeze in a dedicated graphics card for your first PC. So this ship again is a great starter if you can't afford a dedicated graphics card right off the bat, but later on you want to add on a new dedicated one that thankfully will not be bottlenecked as hard as say getting an older used processor that would start off your PC. So that is it for my best budget CPUs for 2020 and I believe this list is going to stay fairly up to date unless the 1600 AF goes out of stock or if the new Ryzen 4000 series of CPUs are released which for the most part, they haven't even been announced yet, the desktop processors. So I wouldn't suspect them actually releasing until 2021. So this list here, I think is gonna be safe to stay for quite a while. So if you enjoyed this video, then do consider subscribing to the Scatterville channel because I'm considering making this, but for graphics cards for maybe like under $350, so that could be something interesting to see. And again, if you wanna check out my other social medias, I have my Twitter, Instagram, and even Discord server, check that out, link below. And again, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterable Channel, signing out.